Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. boys and girls welcome to my zone online school my name is Janice Abrams and welcome my friend the theme for today is we are still busy with houses but before we continue with the lesson remember our social distancing and sanitizing of hands between the fingers good listen three reading genders and ordinal numbers let's go to page 15 what do you see on that page? We see a big blue house. So what must we do on that page? We have to read the story and answer the questions that follows. So let's read there. My house is where my family lives. It is blue. There are four bedrooms where we have a kitchen and three bathrooms. Our family room is where we like to watch television together. When people come over, we eat in the dining room. We have a playroom in the basement. We have a swing in the backyard. I love my house. Now let's go over to the questions. There are five questions. You have to fill in the answers on the lines that they are shown on that page. Okay, question one. What color is the house? Blue. So we have to fill in the answer on top of the line. Question two. Who lives in the house? The family. Question three. How many bedrooms are in the house? Four bedrooms. What is in the backyard? Good. There is a swing in the backyard. Question five. What happens in the family room? We watch television. And remember, boys and girls, we always start with a capital letter and we end the sentence with a full stop. Let's continue with the next page. Page 16. Genders. Who can tell me what is genders? Do you still remember what is genders? Okay, it is a girl or a boy 
or a male or a female. The gender of a person or an animal tells us whether it is a male or a female. Circle the word that matches the picture. Now there are nine pictures and we have to identify whether it's a male or a female. Let's look at the first picture. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a man or a woman? A woman. A woman. You must circle the word woman. Let's look at the next picture. Is it a lion or a lioness? It's a lion. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a peacock or a pen? The, the next picture, is it a father or a mother? The next picture, is it a king or a queen? The next picture, is it a bridegroom or a bride? The next picture, is it a bull or a cow? And the last picture, is it a monk or a nun? Remember what I said? You must circle the correct word. Good. Let's continue with the next page. Page 17. Are we all at page 17? Good. We have a picture there of a male and a female. A boy or a girl. Now under the picture there are two questions that we need to fill in the answers on top of the line. Question one. Is father a man or a woman? A man. Are you a boy or a girl? Good. You fell in the correct answer on the line. Let's continue with the next part. And that is our nouns. Can you remember what is nouns? Nouns identifies people, places, or things. I'm going to repeat myself. A noun identifies people, places, or things. Now we have male nouns and female nouns. The male nouns is father, Man, boy. The female nouns are mother, woman, girl. Match each male to a female correctly with a line. So if we go over to the board, we will see that on the one side is our males and on the other side is our females. We have to match the male with the female. I'm going to show you two examples, then you have to do the rest. Boys, with what female will we match it? With the girls. So we're going to make a line from the word boys to the word girls. Father. With who does father match? Mother. Good. So you must do the rest. Thank you. Let's go over to page 18. Are we all on page 18? 
So, we will be busy with ordinal numbers. What is ordinal numbers? Ordinal numbers is the position where something is situated. Like say for instance, when we stand in a line, then I ask, where is John standing? Is he first, second, or third in the line? Now, in this case, or on this page, we are busy with cupcakes. And we have to see, where is the cupcake standing? In which, at which position is the cupcake standing? So, let's look at the brown cupcake there. Is it first, second, or third? First. The pink one is second. The blue and orange is third. The orange one is fourth. And the brown and pink one is fifth. Write the ordinal numbers indicated by the colored cupcake. So what must we do there? We have five cupcakes in that row. We have two cream ones, one blue one, and two cream ones again. Now at which position, at which place is the blue one Standing. Is it first, second, third, fourth, or fifth? It is third. So we will write in the word, not the number, but the word. Third, we will write there in the block. Going over to the next row of cupcakes. We have a pink cupcake, then we have four cream ones. Where is the pink cupcake situated or placed? First, second, third, fourth, or fifth? It is first. So we have to write in the word first, in the block. Let's go over to the next row. We have four cream cupcakes and one blue one at the end. So where is the blue cupcake situated? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? Fill in the correct word in the block. And so you will do the next two rows as well. Where is the pink and brown cupcake situated? And where is the blue and orange cupcake situated? Remember to fill in the words where the block is situated or the empty block is situated. Fill in the word in that empty box. Let's continue over to page 19. We are still busy with our ordinal numbers. But remember, the first one we had to fill in the ordinal names. Now we must fill in the ordinal numbers itself. Write the ordinal number indicating the position of the starfish in each row. So we have to focus on the starfish. We have to see where the starfish is situated or placed in that row. Good. Let's look at the row of the umbrellas. We have two umbrellas, starfish, and two umbrellas again. So where, at which posi position is the starfish fish situated? First, second, third, fourth, 
or fifth. Fill in the correct position in the empty block provided there. The next row we have floaties. Where is the starfish situated? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? Second. Very, very good. And so you will continue with the glasses and the suns. Remember to fill in the correct ordinal number in the open block provided there for you. We come to the end of our lesson. But before we call on Zashi, let's first practice our social distancing, sanitizing of hands between the fingers. Good. We call on Zashi. Zashi. Bye. Out your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love, or you can practice how to blow hugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And until next time, bye. India's Ransompur Reserve in Rajasthan is home to the rare Bengal tigers. Every year, John Isaac, an Indian-born photographer, travels from New York City to document the lives of these majestic animals. In the last 10 years, I think my interest has grown tenfold and I'm very particular about the survival of the tigers. His goal is to make sure that people everywhere know about the grave danger Bengal tigers face. Extinction. John holds seminars and photographic exhibitions from his visits to Ranthambore to raise awareness of the plight of these tigers. He's currently working on a book to document their dilemma due to an increasing human population encroaching on their territory. According to John and wildlife experts, each tiger needs as much as nine square kilometers to survive, just under four square miles. The relationship between tigers and people has always been difficult, but now, with much less territory to roam, Tigers often wander into human settlements. The conflict between the villagers and the tigers has always been there. And then uh, government tries to compensate. If a tiger kills a goat or a, sh a cow, you know, they pay a certain amount to the villagers. In the past, tigers used migration corridors or routes followed by wildlife for travel between summer and winter habitats. Now these pathways have been taken over by people who use them as living quarters and to reap firewood. Uh, we are 
trying to work with the communities living around and trying to reduce their forest dependency so that we can uh, conserve this uh, corridor patch for the a smooth and easy movement of tigers. Jamuna Devi, a farmer, lives near one of the migratory corridors. She used to depend on the forest for grazing pastures. Now, thanks to a World Wildlife Fund initiative, Jamuna no longer needs to rely on the forest for her family's survival. The secret? Introducing new alternative crops closer to her home. The success of this project has led to even more changes. Jamuna decided to plant fodder for her cattle on her excess land to further preserve the habitat of the tigers. She has also switched to cooking gas so that she doesn't have to collect forest wood for fuel. Climate change also has a direct impact on the habitat of tigers. The last two or three years, they say, there's been a drought. The rains have not been regular. Climate change is a serious uh, problem in this country, even it's in, a, in the continent. So keeping these forest areas alive and protected is the only solution. Uh, this year we have raised a nursery of 10,000 uh, saplings. Forest department have shown their interest. They bought around 2,000, 3,000 saplings. The idea is to plant new trees to replace those lost to severe weather conditions and human activity. Poaching used to be a major threat to Bengal tigers. But thankfully, the number of big cats killed by poachers has plummeted due to measures implemented by law enforcement agencies, resulting in less demand for tiger products. Especially the introduction of camera traps and digital apps, which automatically take photos of moving tigers and suspicious persons moving around in the forest. Every time I hear something like that i feel so good you know in some ways some things are working and so this is what drives me to come and do this uh, in my lifetime if the tigers uh, are extinct i don't know how i'll handle that This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations. Wash away the germs. Achille and Happy Hippo have come to play with Little Lion. Little Lion doesn't want to play. He's afraid of germs. Germs can make you sick. Don't worry, Little Lion. We will get rid of the bad germs and then you can play with us. They hunt for germs, high and low, inside and outside. But the germs are nowhere to be found. What are you looking for? asks Miss Shrub. We're looking for germs, says Achille. Germs? Germs are everywhere. They are so tiny that you can't see them with your eyes. When you touch something dirty, germs hide on your hands. With water and soap, you can get rid of the germs and make your hands clean. You must wash both sides of your hands, under your nails, and between your fingers. We will wash away the germs and make your hands clean. Achille, get fresh water. Happy Hippo, get soap. Wash, wash, wash with water. Scrub, 
scrub, scrub with soap. Rinse, rinse, rinse with water, and the germs will be gone. Achille and Happy Hippo run to tell Little Lion that they found a way to get rid of the germs. After we go to the toilet, after we sneeze, when we cook, and before we eat, we wash, wash, wash with water. We scrub, scrub, scrub with soap. We rinse, rinse, rinse with water, and the germs will be gone. Now we can play all day because we know how to keep the germs away. After all that playing, it's time for cake and tea. But remember to always wash your hands before you eat. The end. COVID-19 affects people very differently. Many people show no symptoms at all, but some are hospitalized for weeks. So what does the disease do to your body? The coronavirus enters through the mouth, nose or eyes. It then usually attaches itself to cells lining the nose, throat, airways or lungs. It can turn these cells into factories that multiply and spread the virus. For the majority, a fever, cough and breathlessness are as bad as it gets. But the virus can damage the small blood vessels lining the lungs and initiate clotting. The alveoli are tiny air sacs where oxygen goes into the blood. If they become inflamed, it can trigger pneumonia. Seriously ill patients need to be given oxygen as the lungs fill with fluid and debris. I legit couldn't breathe. My oximeter was measuring under 88% oxygen levels, which is very dangerous. And the only time I ever thought my life was in danger was at that point. COVID-19 doesn't just affect the lungs. It can also disrupt the immune system, which is used by the body to fight illnesses. Cytokines are part of the immune system that find and signal infections. For some people with severe COVID-19, this system can go into overdrive. If too many cytokines build up, it can cause an overreaction that damages healthy cells. This is called a cytokine storm for the most severe cases. COVID-19 can lead to seizures or even a coma. It can also cause brain problems that lead to strokes. The immune system overreacting can cause clots that stop the blood supply to parts of the brain. Brain inflammation, psychosis and dementia-like symptoms can also affect seriously ill patients. The average length of the illness is 14 days, but many people have symptoms for much longer. Breathing problems and post-viral fatigue last for months in some cases. <laughs> I can't uh, walk for long simply because I will feel a little bit um, short of breath and I feel the need to sit down. And that's something that has never happened to me before. Some of the people who are most likely to develop severe symptoms are older adults and those with underlying health conditions. It's not fully known how anyone will react to COVID-19 until they get it. So it's important for everyone to follow health guidance. What precautions are you taking to stay safe?